guys. Here on a very soggy day. I just saw Robin put that down. She lives in the town real close to me. It's crazy how bad the all the rain we've had here. I think we've had, I think I heard we've had around three inches here in Mooresville. It's been crazy. Okay, looks like I'm on Facebook, so we're good to go. Um, I know it's been worse down south. I heard Louisiana had like over seven inches of rain yesterday, and I think it's still raining today, so I know they've had it worse than we ha we've had it. But yeah, this three inches of rain or more here in Mooresville is crazy. We've got a nice little river going down our um, front yard again as usual. Not, I shouldn't say usual. When it rains a lot, that's what happens. It doesn't happen when it's just a regular rain. But hopefully we won't float away. And hopefully you guys aren't going through the rain yourselves. Let's see who's on here today. Ramona, glad you're here. I don't think I remember seeing you before. I'm glad you're here. And Robin, of course, I said hi to Robin. Marlene from Wisconsin. Hi, Marlene. Uh, cloudy in Washington, a little gloomy too. I bet it. I think it's like that in a lot of places in the country today. It's kind of a dreary, yucky day. I did not mind working in my office. I love working in my office anyway, but when it's a nice sunny day, I don't have any windows down here in the basement. So today didn't bother me one bit because every time I went upstairs, it just looked so dreary. I'm like, oh, down here, I'm forgetting all about the rain. <laughs> Thankfully, we're not flooding here in the basement. We're doing good right now. Let's see. Just had a light rain today, Marlene. That's good. I'm glad it wasn't a lot. It's been crazy here, and it's supposed to rain most of the day tomorrow, I do believe. Hi, Mimi. I'm glad you could make it. In Kansas, and Becky uh, Schlossnagel. I'm going to say Becky, do your last name, because I know I've got a few other Beckys that come on a lot. And Stephanie McGregor, I'm glad you're back. Oh, good. You got your catalog. Good. Hope you like it. And I'll be going over that catalog when it uh, it goes live in May. So because it's a little different from what's been in the past. So it's a nice catalog, though. I like it. It's got a lot of neat um, oh projects, ideas in there. So it's definitely a keeper even when it uh, uh, expires. Oh, I've got a lot of people coming on right now. Marilyn, glad you're here from Nebraska. And Beth's already started the door price. I'll tell you that here in a minute. For my regulars, you can start doing your hashtag door price if you want to. So that's Beth Watson. Glad you're here. Debbie Franklin. Cold, wet, and rainy in Vermont. Ugh, that's a bad combination. <laughs> Cindy Pitts. It's 84 degrees in Northern California. Be quiet. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm glad you have some nice weather. We're supposed to have some nice weather this weekend. I'm looking forward to that. So that'll be good. Hi, Crystal. Raining in Kentucky. I had a feeling you'd probably be getting some rain, too. And Beth from Texas. Glad you're here. And hi, Carmel. Just cloudy in Texas. That's good because you guys have been having a lot of storms down there lately. Hi, Michelle. Glad you're here. Okay, now I'm starting to see some hashtag door prizes. Hi, Paula and Marilyn and Marlene from Iowa. Glad you're here. Okay, and Vicki from Connecticut. Oh boy, that's a lot of people right here at the very beginning. I'm glad you guys are here. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the door prize. Let me explain that here real quick. I always like to tell everybody hello right at the very beginning. Oh, hi, Becky White. Glad you're here. There's another Becky. That's why I was doing last names. Everyone, so if I do a last name, it's just because I know there's more than one with that first name. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and show this real quick. Oh, I do have it set up. Here we go. And... If you live in the United States and want to be part of the door prize here tonight, then make sure you comment hashtag door prize and make sure you do it just the way it's written there on the screen. I've, there's a raffle feature here on this uh, uh, website I use for the live and it picks the winner for me, but you have to type it in exactly correct that hashtag door prize. That way it'll uh, notice your comment and put it in the drawing for at the end. So it's hashtag door prize, all small letters, no um, no spaces. And if you're uh, around my age and don't do hashtags, hashtag is also the number sound, number sign or pound sign. That was what we used to call them. And everybody calls it hashtag now. So, yep, I'm seeing a bunch of people. It looks like everybody's getting it typed in right. Good. We've only been doing it for a few weeks, but I keep having some new people. And I just want to make sure everybody knows how to do it. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and switch cameras. And I'm going to put that. Uh, back on again. Let's see here. There it is. So that way you know uh, what to put in there for people to come in late. 
Oh, hi, Angie. I'm glad you're here. And Polly, glad you guys are all here. And Debbie Franklin, I don't think I said hi to you. And Cindy Pitts, got a bunch of people came on all of a sudden. Now I'm getting ready to draw for everybody that watched the live and the replay that did hashtag door prize. These are the uh, cork rounds that are in the January to April mini catalog right now, but they are retiring. So I'm uh, giving away all the embellishments that I have, full packs that is, of things that are retiring right now. So I'm going to pull up that screen. It's going to have all the names. We almost reached 50 people on this one. So that's one of my higher ones. I think I've been around 50, around this, uh, I think it's like 48. So I have done that before, but I always love it when I get up that many. So let's see who's going to win. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to wait till it stops because I always think I know the winner and then it keeps moving on me. So let's see who's going to win. Oh, is Pat going to win again? My goodness. I promise this deal is not rigged. I use it so people won't think that I'm picking my friends. But Pat Lockhart, she's won a few here. I've got a stash here, Pat. If you're watching for you, I need to get with you to get all these to you. So congratulations, Pat. Okay. I'm going to go ahead. Oops, wrong tab. i got to do a bunch of things here in the background. There we go. Got that going. So congratulations, Pat. You won again. <laughs> okay, I'm going to quit sharing that screen. There we go. We are good to go now. And now I'm going to explain the door prize here tonight. I've, well, I always like to offer two because there are a lot of people that can't join live. And I want to make sure that people that watch the replay get a chance to win something too. So we'll go back to this screen. And I'm going to bring in, these are things that retired last year. Actually, I forgot I still had these. So these are opal rounds. They're a lot like the, um, oh, the foil gems that I used in last week's class. They're a little bit different. They're all a little bigger too, but you can color these with Stampin' Blends to be whatever color you want. And it's got some actually iridescent looking uh, foil in it. The foil uh, gems that I used last week, it's more of a gold foil, gold foil flex inside. These are more iridescent. So I really liked those. So I've got this pack to give away. So this is everybody that is watching live here tonight, lives in the United States, and comments hashtag door price, just like it's shown there on the screen. And then I've got this for the replay people. I still got a few of these. This is also from last year that retired. Opaque adhesive back gems. It's white, fresh freesia. This is either Melon Mambo or Berry Burst. I think it's Melon Mambo and Gorgeous Grape. That's definitely Melon Mambo. I think that was before um, Berry Burst came back. So these are really, really good. They actually coordinated with a uh, milkshake set. Actually, that's still available. That's in the catalog right now. Don't think that's retiring, but don't quote me on that. I still have not memorized <laughs> that. But this is for everybody that watches the live and the replay, lives in the United States, and comments hashtag door prize. I always have you, you have to do the hashtag door prize during the live so that uh, feature can pick out your comment to put you in the drawing. I'm also doing it for the replay. That way I know you want to be in the drawing because some people just don't want to, and that is totally okay. Okay. I love it. embellishments too, Angie. <laughs> That's probably why I still have so many. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with the class. I'm going to take this down for right now. And the uh, host code shows in that ticker, but I made another one because you can see it a little better, I think. You'll see it all the time. But if you place an order that's at least $40 before shipping and tax using that host code by next Wednesday, which is April 17th, then you will get these card kits to make two each of the cards I'm making here tonight. I do all the embossing for you and any die cutting that's done with a die set that is not part of the featured bundle. If it's part of the featured bundle, you'll have to die cut it yourself. I will give you the card stock to use to die cut that though. Um, if you bump it up to a $50 order before shipping and tax, I'm doing something different this time. I'm not using um, an embellishment. I'm using Wink Estella. This was out of stock for the longest time. I was beginning to wonder if it was ever going to come back, but it did. Oh, and Pat, I just saw your name pop up. You won again. <laughs> you are really lucky. <laughs> Let me show you. Before I forget, you won the cork rounds. So next time I see you, I think I've got three embellishment packs to give you one last few months. <laughs> so congratulations again. 
Okay, so now we've got, uh, oh, so it's the Wink Estella now instead of embellishments. So you get a free Wink Estella if you bump it up to $50 order before shipping and tax. Now, make sure you use that host code because that's the way I can afford to give you these free things. Now, um, if your order is $150 or more before shipping and tax, make sure to not use that host code. That way you'll still get all of this. You'll also get uh, the Stampin' Rewards from Stampin' Up. So $40 order before shipping and tax with the host code. You get the card kits. $50, at least a $50 order before shipping and tax with the host code. You'll also get the Wink of Stella, brand new one. And then if it's $150 or more, do not get the use the host code and get all of these. Okay. Now I'm going to take the ticker down, but I'm going to keep that little host code there. That way you can see that throughout the video. Um, if you forget to write it down or lose your post-it note or whatever you write it down on, just look down in the video description. Every time I bring up a link on YouTube, look down the video description. You'll find all the links down there. And um, if you're watching on Facebook, go to the top of my Facebook page and you'll see a learn more button. Click on that and you'll find everything there. The class information on the on Facebook, it's under um, get free stuff when you order from me. In the video description on YouTube, it just says uh, card class at home link. So that's easier to find. Okay, so I'm going to bring in the bundle. I want to show you the bundle real quick. Oh, you're welcome, Pat. <laughs> Okay, here is the Filled with Fun. This is, last couple of weeks, I've done, uh, oh, flower cards. Now, there are some flowers in the set, as you can see right here, but they're more cutesy looking. And I thought, okay, the last two times I've done the really pretty floral stuff, so the first two weeks ago, are elegant wedding cards. So I thought, you know what, we're going to make, do a little fun one this time. Not that those aren't fun, but you know what I mean. <laughs> but here's the bundles. This, I picked this out. This is part of the online exclusives. Uh, last week I did the Simply Zinnia that came out in March. This was another bundle that came out in March. So you may not have seen it yet. There is a link to the online exclusives down in the video description. On Facebook, I think you just need to go to my online store and then go to the online exclusive page there and you'll find everything there. So this is a really neat one. I love making a wagon, but not all the cards have a wagon. The first card actually does not have a wagon, but the other two do. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead. It's your style, Angie. Good. <laughs> and then here are all the dies. You can see there's like, uh, I guess it's just one standalone die. Well, those are standalone too. All of the others, and these are standalone. All the others uh, die cut an image out of the stamp set. So I, we have had bundles for a few years now. I was so happy when those came out. I love it. I don't like the fussy cut. Okay. So you've seen the bundle. Let's get the first card out here. This one's kind of a poppy parade. Now, all these colors that I um, picked out are from the um, Retiring Just Kidden DSP. DSP is Designer Series Paper, by the way. Should have brought that paper over here. But if you want to see the um, all of the images, just go to my online store, go up to the search engine and type in Just Kidden, K-I-D-D-I-N. And that DSP will pop up and you'll be able to see pictures of every single design. There are some adorable ones in there with kit with little kids on them. I love those. There weren't enough multiples though, so I couldn't use any of them on this because that those kids would look so cute. I might have to make another card and post it real soon, having the kids with a wagon because that would look really cute. But there would be only like one or two of the same one on each sheet. And that just wouldn't have been enough for the card kits. So I'm using some of the pattern paper that's in the pack, which is still really nice. So you can kind of get a glimpse, see how cute you can see how half of one of the little kids and they're, they're just so cute. Okay. So I wanted to let, let you know about that because that is retiring. It, the paper's not on sale, but it is retiring and it's still available. I'll check this afternoon. So that should still be good. I'm not sure how long it'll still be available, but it is for right now. Oh, Debbie. Yeah. I love the Zinnia bundle. I do too. It's really, really pretty. Okay, so the five and a half by eight and a half for the regular card base, which is Poppy Parade. So I'm going to go ahead and fold this in half, get those corners lined up. That's how I always get it uh, to fold in half for me when I line up those corners. I used to look at this edge here, and I always got it off. It's still never really folded in half, but now I can do it a lot better when I line up those, um, oh, line up the corners. See, Robin... Oh, thanks. I'm glad you like those cards last week. I really, I have to admit, that's probably more my style, but I still like making the fun cards. 
but I, I get into the the floral cards. I have so many floral floral images. It's crazy stamp sets. So I've got that all ready. This is going to be a landscape card. Actually, uh, two of the cards are going to be landscape cards instead of the portrait that I usually do. Oh, hi, Myra. I'm glad you're here. Just saw you put on uh, hashtag door prize. <laughs> so let's see. What do I want to do first? Oh, I wanted to show you. Did I bring that over? Yes, I did. I'm also using some embossing folders. These also came out the same time as this bundle in the online exclusives. They're called Fun Patterns. As you can see, they're a little smaller than usual. These fit our mini stamp and cut emboss machine, but they also work in the big one, the regular sized one. So I'm actually using both of these. Let me show you the papers. This is a three and a half by two inch piece. So that is one of, oh, there, there we go. If I angle it just right, that's when you can see it. So that's what one of the folders does. And then this is a piece of poppy to pray, this one and a half by four. Let's see if I can get that one to show up. This one's a little harder to show up. Hopefully you can see that. But it's got uh, little flowers all over it. But it really goes well. well. Hopefully you're seeing that. There we go. Sometimes you guys are seeing it better than I'm seeing it, which I'm glad. I'd rather you guys saw it really good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and start putting some pieces together. This is a piece of just a little bigger crushed curry, three and three quarter by two and a quarter. And that's just going to go right there in the center. Sometimes I like to start assembling things so I don't cover them up and lose them later. That doesn't mean I won't lose them. I'm the queen of covering things up. Put this right here in the middle. And I'm going to bring in this piece. This is a lemon lime twist. This is a it was an in color a few years ago, and I'm so glad it came back. This is five and a quarter by four. And this is a photopolymer stamp set, so I need to grab my stamp and pierce mat. Here we go. And I'm going to stamp. There is a little heart in the stamp set. And I'm going to use my lemon lime twist. You've seen me do this a lot. Because since I already embossed this piece and the poppy parade, I thought it'd be a little too much if I embossed something else. So this time, and I didn't like it just being plain green on this side. Let me get that ink pad up here. So I'm just going to stamp a little background here. I'm kind of making triangles and moving the heart so it's going different directions. And I'm going to cover up about half of it. I'm not going to go all the way to the right. And actually doing half is more than I need because I'm going to be covering it up, this little part up. I do a little more than I need just in case because I don't want to put something here and then have an empty spot right here just wouldn't look right. So I'd rather cover something up than have it not look right. But this always makes a nice subtle background. And if you want it more subtle, you could even use Versamark. And that puts more of a uh, watermark on it. This is just the same color uh, ink as, on the car as the cardstock, and it just makes it a little darker when you use the ink pad. Okay, so that is ready to go. That heart put away. Now I'm going to grab this piece that is, um, I think I told you the size already, but it's one and a half by four. Put some adhesive on it. Oops, you always saw that, but that's okay. I always mean to cover that up. One of these days I'll remember to do that. <laughs> So I did some of the coloring ahead of time so you wouldn't have to sit and watch me color at all. So I'm going to put this about right here. It's a little like to the right of the center. Okay. Then I'm going to grab that piece of uh, the Just Kidding DSP. This is a two by three inch piece. I hate covering up those kids, but it just didn't go with what I was doing. And I'm going to put this in about right here, making sure it's straight. Okay, and I think I'm going to go ahead and put this on the card base since I've already got this and it goes all the way across. There is a little bit hanging off. I was getting ready to say none of it was hanging over, but this is. So I'm going to cut that off just a little bit. Just put those scissors right up against that uh, lemon lime cardstock, and that helps you get it off straight. Okay, now I'm going to put this on the card base. Grab that. Make sure. And I'm telling you this because last week I did it wrong when I was making my original. Make sure that fold is on top. It's actually on last week's cards. I put it on totally upside down because I didn't double check to make sure the fold was on top. 
Got that there. I'm going to go ahead and put this on too. And a way to place this is kind of in the center of the card, but I'm also looking at this DSP and I want the border of the DSP around it to be about the same width on the right and on the top and bottom. So that looks pretty good. Okay, now you already, well here, let's go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp the greeting. This is a, a four by three quarter inch piece of basic white. And I'm gonna use Poppy Parade. And I am using, is that the one? I'm, yeah, that is the one I'm using. It didn't look right for a second. You make my heart bloom. Thought that would be the perfect one for the flowers. And I'm gonna stamp it on the right end. And I, for my regulars, I bet you can guess why I'm doing it on the end. <laughs> because you can make this into a, take a little triangle out if you want to. I like to do this a lot. It's just a lot easier. Just cut a little slant off, an angled cut actually. So that way it looks a little bit like a banner too. So that's the way I want that to be. I'll put that to the side. And then I've already stamped these. So I'm going to show you. Oh, there we go. Couldn't find the empty space for that. Here we go. So these are the flowers and it's this stamp. Where did I put it? There we go. The stamp right here. here. And when you stamp this, you want to go above. You notice how I didn't get it too close to the bottom because the die for this, let me grab that. You'll see me die cutting it here in a minute. But there is a little space here that makes it so you when you do the wagon this spot is what you can glue it onto so you line up the flowers so you want to have some extra cardstock underneath it so that's why i've got it up a little bit i stamped both of these with the um tuxedo black memento pad and now i'm going to do some coloring i haven't done with you guys before i'm using my wink Estella. where'd it go there it is and I'm going to do some coloring. I'm going to take my Poppy Parade. And normally I would, oh, I can't squeeze this. That's right. I forgot I cleaned it out. So I'm going to squeeze this, get some ink out. And then I'm actually going to go over here, I think. So I want to uh, clean this off later because I don't want any Wink Estella on this when I'm all done. So I'm going to do all my Wink Estella down here for right now. Then I'll wipe that off when the class is over. That way, when I want to, if I need to do another ink well like this, when I'm watercoloring, I can squeeze this and not get any Wink of Stella in the actual pad. So you do want to clean that off before you do that again. Oh, thanks, Marlene. I'm glad you like the layout so far. Let's see, Angie, do I have a trick on doing it straight? Hmm. <laughs> not really. Sometimes I can tell with the paper. But then if you don't cut the paper straight, then it's kind of hard. I just, I've just gotten to where I eyeball it. To be honest, I think I might have actually gone down a little bit. It looks like it might be a little lower here on the right. If it's just off a hair, don't worry about it. That's one thing I keep telling people. It's just, um, oh, it's uh, handmade. So it's, if it's not perfect. But yeah, what I can do, that that's one nice thing with our seal. I can pop this up again in the first 10 minutes. And I can bring that up a little bit and straighten it up. There we go. So I just kind of play around with it. It does help, like I said, with our seal that you can lift that up within the first 10 minutes. Once it's uh, after that, it's usually on there pretty good and you can't tear it, get it up without tearing up your cardstock. And I did have somebody tell me, this is nice to know, if you can't get it to come up, grab your heat tool and uh, heat up the paper. That actually heats up the adhesive and you can peel it off a lot easier. So that, that'll help too. And if you really want to make sure, I like this ruler. Let me show you quick. This is one we actually sold years ago. I've been a demo demonstrator. Let's see, what's the date? Oh my goodness, Tuesday, it's gonna be 21 years. I can't believe it. But it's like one of those quilting type ones. So I can really make sure it's straight and just put it right underneath. And I'm looking at that and I can tell it's pretty straight. So that's another way you could do it if you have one of these rulers. Um, a regular ruler, that's a little harder, but these see-through that have all these lines through the whole thing, that kind of helps with lining it up too. And I'm pretty sure Fisker still uh, sells this. I'm sure you can still get it like at Joann's or someplace like that. It sells material or quilting stuff. Okay, so now 
I'm going to take my Wink of Stella. I'm going to, and I forgot to shake this up. You do want to shake it up. That gets all the glitter all through it because sometimes it'll start settling in one spot. Let's see. Oh, I know, Lynn, I just was reading your thing. You would have never put these colors together. I wouldn't have either. <laughs> That's what I love about the, I say this probably every week. I love the colors that they come up with with a DSP. This one is definitely one I would not have come up with on my own, but it looks kind of cool when you get it all done. I was kind of surprised. <laughs> so I'm gonna, what I did, I picked up a little ink with my Wink of Stella. And now I'm just going to color it in like we normally do. But I am putting glittery beautifulness, I don't know if that's a word, on each petal. Now I bet you when I put this close, you're not going to be able to see this. So you definitely want to try this at home. You could just, if you have a Wink of Stella. But it is so glittery. It is so pretty. I wish I could show you the shine. But it is, you might be able to see it a little bit. But it is really, really neat. So it's kind of like using the blending, uh, our blender pens, that you're getting some glitter on there. So now I'm going to go ahead and clean this off. And I'm not even squeezing it because I don't want to lose a lot of the glitter that's inside. And you can tell it's already cleaned up. All better. If it's not coming off, you can't squeeze this a little bit. But I've noticed once you get this started, because when I first got it, I squeezed it and it wasn't, wasn't coming out, I could tell. And all of a sudden, a bunch of it came out. And I was like, oh, no. So I, but once you get it going and shake it up, I think when you shake it, it kind of moistens this up again. Because so I've noticed that. And that gets it to color a lot easier. They do come up with the best colors, don't they, Lynn? I, I agree. I couldn't see your comment right at first. Let me see if I can get this angled up a little higher. One of these days, I'm going to make it some of my tablets up a little higher so I can see it better. Okay, so that's how I colored each of these petals, that exact way. Now, I would have, I accidentally, as I was coloring, I got to coloring and forgot I didn't want to color that flower center. So I left that one empty. <laughs> I was like, oh, Christy, you didn't want to color that. Now, this has already got... Um, ink in it. I didn't want to squeeze it because it's already got Wink of Stella in there. So I'm going to pick it up. Now that I know it's clean, pick up a little of the uh, crushed curry and do that flower center. And I've noticed when it's a new one, because this is a, a new one, it um, I don't have to shake it up as much. When it's almost, when it's getting low, then I shake it up a lot more. Sometimes you're going to see me shake it and I'm getting all the yellow off because I'm so used to having to shake it. <laughs> So what I'm going to do, am I going to, oh, I think I'm using this yellow again, so I'm not going to do that yet. Probably at the end of the class, I'll show you. All I do is just take a paper towel and clean out the ink when I'm all done so I don't get any Wink of Stella in the pad. That's how I do that. So now I'm going to use the Lemon Lime Twist. And, oh, I've still got some ink, so I'm not going to worry about getting, squeezing it right now. And I'm just going to color in. So this is just like using our aqua painters or our um, blending, our blender pens. But I'm coloring with the glitter, so it's, now it's now nice and shiny. So that is how all that got colored in. And that is all, yes. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this again, because I don't want to be surprised later and mix some green in another color that I didn't want. I'm going to bring in my die cutting machine. Oh, make some room here because it takes a lot of room for this puppy. Okay. Oh, hi, Patty. You finally found me. Did you? I wonder what was going on. Yep, I'm here. Okay. Glad you made it. I love the internet because sometimes it just acts up and you can't find what you normally can find. It drives me nuts. <laughs> that happens to me all the time. Okay, so I've got the base platform number one and the die plate number two. This is how you set up our standard cut emboss machine with die cutting. And then the standard cutting plate number three. So I'm going to put this here. And this was the die I was telling you about. So I'm going to make sure that I get all the flowers in that opening. I'm really looking along here to make sure it's lined up. That looks pretty good. And then I use post-it tape to hold it down. Oh, here's, I've got a piece of tape here. Um, you can also use post-it notes 
and just kind of tear them where the adhesive's at. So you've got little pieces. That works just as good because the exact same adhesive. It holds it down enough that it doesn't move when I put it through the die cutting machine, but it also is loose enough that I'm able to take it off um, a lot easier and not tear up my cardstock. Oh, you're having stormy weather, Patty. That probably had a lot to do with it. Where we've been having, I know we've had about three, three inches of rain at least today. It's been crazy. I bet you anything, because I was a little nervous with the flooding that well, my internet was going to get messed up for tonight, but so far so good. So that's all ready. And we've got that nice little tab. So it'll go, with, like I said, I'm not making a wagon this time, but that's what would attach to the wagon. And then I'll go ahead and do this one. Originally, I was just going to use one row of flowers, but uh, you're going to see here, I'm actually making one of the wagon dies or pieces for the wagon into a flower box. And I thought it needed to have another row of flowers to look a little fuller. It could be a flower box or it could just be a little flower garden with a fence in front of it, whichever you want it to be. <laughs> Let's see, Robin, I've always stamped or colored and then did we can still over it. I do that a lot too. Yep, you can definitely uh, ink it up like that, which is really nice. That way, that, that kind of takes a step away for you. It's a nice added technique for it. But yeah, that was the way I used to always do it. Color it in and then put Winkastella on top. And now you can just, you can do both at the exact same time. Okay, so now I'm going to put this out of the way. I think that is all, that is all the die cutting. And then, let's see, what did I do with the inside? Oh, yeah. I want to stamp the inside while I'm thinking of it. So I'm going to bring this back in. And I decided to make a little heart border down here. So I'm grabbing the heart and the lemon lime twist. Oh, hi, Deborah. I'm glad you made it from Pennsylvania. So I'm going to take this heart and I'm going to kind of make like two rows. So I'm going to kind of start here at the top. Because I'm okay if the hearts kind of get cut off here at the bottom. And kind of move them around. Make my little triangles. Those end up angling the same way. No big deal. And it doesn't have to be a complete straight line. But I just wanted to make my own little border here just to do something a little bit different. Just about done. Maybe one more right there. There we go. So now I've just got a nice little heart border down there. Close this up. And I think I'm going to go ahead and put this on the inside of the card. That is definitely all the stamping on this card. I'm going to turn this over. And this will go. Oops, stuck to my finger. There we go. Open this up and put that right here. Okay, now, you know what I need to figure out? Oh, that's how I did it. I had to remember how I did this. <laughs> I'm going to bring in the two flowers. Ooh, I did forget to die cut something. Hold on a minute. That's right. Since the wagon is part of the bundle, now let me clean this off. I got some glue on here. Um, I'm not, I don't die cut this, and I forgot that. So let's go ahead and bring this back in. Pick up all the dice here in this one right here. It makes a great fence and it also makes a neat uh, wooden uh, border you can put on the uh, on the wagon to make it look more like a rustic wagon. But this is a three and a quarter by one inch piece. Fits perfectly for that. And whenever it's a rectangle, I always put it in at an angle. That way, the smallest uh, corner goes in first. That helps so the die does not get warped. It also makes it die cut better, I think, too. And it doesn't crunch and make a ton of noise. Put this through here. And now we have that with a little wood grain on it. So now I can put this away. I knew I was forgetting to die cut something, but I totally forgot about that. Okay. I'm going to bring that in and I'm going to put, you know what? I need to look at my original. I'm going to try to get it over here to where you can't see it. 
I just made these yesterday. You would think I'd remember how to do it. There we go. I remember now. Okay, so I'm going to bring in my silicone mat. If I can reach it, I've got it kind of trapped behind some ink pads. And then one of the flowers here. I'm going to go ahead and put, let's see, I'm going to put a little glue on the top. I could use the seal also. But I think using the glue might be a little bit easier because then I can scoot the flowers if I don't get them just where I want them. I'm going to put them across here like so, so you can see the blue there. I'm going to lay this down and then bring this to it. And move it over a little bit. And the flowers are going to hang over the edge just a teeny bit. That's the way it's supposed to be. But I don't know if you can see, I'm starting to show some white underneath the flowers. So I need to raise that up a little bit again. So I don't want to see that. I just want to see flowers coming through the holes in this die. And then hold that down for a few seconds. Get that glue to take hold. Okay, so now we've got that. And I just thought it needed to have some more. And I wanted some a little higher up too. So that's why I made the second row. This time I'm going to use dimensionals. So this is going to go on just like this behind it. So it's going to be a little bit higher up. But to make it look a little three, more 3D, I'm going to turn the first one over. I actually have that on cockeyed, but it looks fine. Nobody's going to know it's on cockeyed. <laughs> and then I'm going to put dimensionals right here where these three flowers here at the top are kind of sticking up. I think I'm going to go ahead and put a couple down here too. A little glue on my fingers. I'm going to clean those off here in a minute. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to take your pick tool. Take the paper backings off. And then, oh, get over here. I'm going to lay this down again. I'm not having them touch yet. I'm kind of eyeballing this. So I kind of want to see the flower centers. The camera's in the way there. That looks pretty good. Because so I still want to see some of the flower centers there on the top. Now that I've got it where I want it, then I'll push it down. I'm still using my silicone mat because I knew some of these dimensionals would be sticking out right here, which is fine because it's going to go on the card really good that way. So I'm going to put some regular seal on the back of this back one, the one we just attached. Bring in my card base. Make sure the fold's on top. And then this is going to go up towards the top more. It's not going to be right in the center. It's centered left and right. But I want it closer to the top. That's going to go on there. Oh, thanks, Becky. I'm glad you're liking it. Oh, hi, Patty. Glad you're here. Good evening from Delaware. Oh, good. I'm glad you're liking the tidbits, Angie. <laughs> I try to help. And then I almost became a school teacher, so maybe that's why I can do this. <laughs> well, I was a Sunday school teacher for years, so I, I've got a little teaching behind my history. And I was a teacher's aide for a little while. Okay, this is, oh, I told you the size of this. That's right. We already did all that. I'm going to kind of stick this, the top of it, underneath the flower box just a little bit. The first one, I put some seal in there. That's why I put this above that we'd have room for our strip with the greeting. I'll slide it under there just a little bit, just the very tip top. Because I want, I don't want to cover up any of the words. I want a little bit of the DSP to show right here. And oops, I forgot. You could do it there. But I think I like it better with the, right on the edge here at the lemon lime layer. There we go. And when I got done with that, I thought, okay, it needs a little something more. So if you get my card kits, you're going to find a long piece of this uh, lemon lime twist ribbon. It's from the Ribbon Duo Combo Pack. This pack also has a petal pink ribbon in it, and it's retiring. So if you want to check that out, just go to my online store and uh, search for Ribbon Duo Combo Pack, and you'll find this ribbon. But this is a 16-inch strip. You only need an 8-inch one, so you're going to fold it in half. Let me find my ribbon scissors here. And then just cut it right there at the loop. So now I've got uh, two pieces. This piece I can use for the second card, because like I said, I give you enough to make two cards. And then I'm going to tie this in a bow. I'm right-handed, so I'm going to start here on the left end. And then make my little loop. Go around my finger. 
and tie it. That's not too bad. Sometimes I would go ahead and do that over again because it kind of twisted right here, but it looks okay. So I'm good with that. Now, the reason I start on an end is because you have to do all that looping with a uh, ribbon that's over here. If you go right in the center, then this end would be a lot way too short. Now, if you're, um, I got something stuck in my finger. If you're left-handed, I do believe you probably want to start on the right end. That would probably make it easier for you. Okay, now I'm going to grab my glue dots. Oh, hi, Trana. You make the, oh, thank you. She said I make the neatest cards. Thank you so much. I'm glad you could make it. Hope, hopefully you're not flooding down there. I know Martinsville floods a lot. Okay, so now I'm going to take this off. I know uh, Robin was saying it's pretty soggy. Here in Mooresville, I guess, Bridge Street uh, and uh, Samuel, Samuel, Way Park, Samuel Parkway, Moore, there we go, Samuel Moore Parkway is closed because it's all flooded. But that floods a lot. For those of you that live around here, you know that. <laughs> so I'm go ahead and put that down. I liked it there in the corner. And I, I'm fine with the ribbons going this way. I really didn't want to cover up the flowers too much. If you wanted to put the ribbon here, that would look cute too. I just thought of that. Whichever you want to put it. I probably would put it down here though, because this is raised up. And that would make it even fatter to be able to fit in the envelope if you want to mail it. I'm going to cut this at an angle, both to make them about the same length. I'm not going to fret if it's not quite right. Well, sometimes I do, but <laughs> that's not too bad. That works. Sometimes I do get picky when I make my cards, I have to admit. So that is it. Not used to not putting embellishments on it, but having all that glitter from the, um, oh, the Wink of Stella, it doesn't need it. But boy, I wish you could see. Well, I'm having trouble seeing it. Something about the lights. Oh, there we go. Something about the lights I use. They light up really good for the camera, but you can't see some of the uh, glitter, which is a shame because I know at my desk it was looking really pretty. So there we go. So that is the first card. Now I'm going to get ready for the second one. Oh, do you, do you have a two-hour delay, Trina? I, I wondered about that. And Martinsville usually gets hit pretty bad. So I had a feeling you guys would probably have a two-hour delay. That doesn't surprise me one bit. Okay, so now I'm going to grab the card base card for the second one. I just had to use this color. I have not used it enough, but I love it. This is a Azure Afternoon, I think is what you call it. I have used it before. Oops, another one I forgot to cover up. <laughs> I did some of the coloring ahead of time again. I cheated. But this is a like the five and a half by eight and a half for the card base. But isn't that a pretty blue? It looks a little bit different than what it's showing up on the video, but not by much. It's actually pretty close. A lot of times videos kind of ch change the color just a little bit, but that, that's, that's not too bad. But I think it's such a pretty color. And this is one of the colors in that Just Kidding DSP. So I'm going to go ahead and get this ready. Now, this is the only portrait card that I'm doing. I guess that's what you call it. I'm just going by like when you do a Word document. They say landscape is the longer one and portraits this way. So that's what I, why I always use those words for the cards. Oh, thanks, Michelle. I'm glad you liked it. Okay, so I'm going to put this to the side. I have a piece. Actually, in the kit, there are two four by five and a quarter inch pieces. One's for the inside, one's for the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this one for the outside. And this is a piece of that Just Kidding DSP. You can see a few of the kids on the other side again. <laughs> but this one is a one and a half by five and a quarter. I'm going to go ahead and put some adhesive on that. Uh, now, these little kids, I would fussy cut. I said it earlier, I don't like to fussy cut. These, I would fussy cut. They are so cute. I'm going to put this right along the right edge of my cardstock here. And it looks like I might have cut the DSP a little bit too long, but that's okay. That's why I always put these layers on before I put them on the card base. If I have paper going from end to end, because it's so much easier to cut that off if I make it too long before putting it on the card. Let's go right up against that white card stock again, and that takes it off. And I see I have got a little bit of a boo-boo there. Let's see if I can get that off. I think I got a little bit of glue on there. All gone. This is an adhesive remover. We used to have this, in case you're wondering, 
We used to have this, but we don't anymore, but you can buy it on Amazon. I have seen it. And I think they do call it adhesive remover, but it works like a charm. I love it. I use it a lot. Okay. So actually it's going to go on this way. And I think I can just, oh, I don't want to put it on the card just yet. That's right. Oh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. I couldn't see the left edge of my card. I forgot how I did that. Okay. So I put this on the card base. Oh, and I forgot. I, I am used to put, I usually put my DSP on the left, but I wanted it on the right this time for the way my, I was doing the card. Okay. Now I have these two circles. I'm using the deckled circles dies. Oh, I like to get these out. I can't remember if these are available there for a while. They weren't, or they were on low inventory. If they're not available right now, they will be back. Don't worry. They did make it in the annual catalog. I love all these circles. Normally, I use the smaller ones. This one, I wanted a big one, a big circle. So I'm using the number 10 and the number 11 circle die. I always do it. Number one is the smallest. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So there's that one and then the 11th one. So 11, 12, 13, so 14 circles in this set. I love it. You've seen me use it a lot. But this is the one I die cut the white and it was out of a piece of... Let's see here. Oh, wrong list, Christy. Uh, four and a half by four and a half inch piece of basic white. This one was done out of a five by five piece of pool party. But if you get the card kits, those will already be die cut for you. And I don't know if you can see. Oh, yeah, you can. See the ripples in that? I thought that, that kind of reminded me of streamers. So after I die cut the circle out, I put it through with the cascading ruffles 3D embossing folder. I brought that over to just because it's retiring. It's a nice big one. So all I did was just put this in and put it through and gave me those little streamer look, the streamer look. Now, the good thing about this being re that it's retiring, they actually have it on sale. We've got a few things on the last chance. It's also called last chance list. Um, some of them are on discount right now. It started, the discount started uh, last Tuesday on the 9th. This one is uh, usually $11.00. During last chance, it's only $5.50. So it's a really good deal. So if you didn't get this in your uh, stash while it was available, make sure you get it soon because it's while supplies last or until August 30th. Not August, April 30th. <laughs> Getting way ahead of myself. Not ready for August. I mean, summer's over already. So I'm going to put this on my circle. Kind of center it. Right now, it doesn't matter if they're going the right direction, but when I put it on here, I you can do whichever. You can have it go sideways like this, or you can have them go up and down. I opted for up and down. It really doesn't matter. It's whichever one you like the best, or you can even do them diagonal for that matter. But I'm going to put them on straight, and how I'm going to do it, I'm going to be cutting one side of it off because I didn't. this is actually a little bigger than the card base which I think it's neat having circles that are too big for a card. That means they would be perfect for scrapbooks. If you want a bunch of different size circles on your scrapbook pages, this die sets for you. I think that's why it uh, sells out sometimes because so many people like it. So I'm going to put it on about right here. I've got about this much of the DSP showing on the right. And push that down. And I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to do what I do if I cut my DSP too long. I'm putting my scissors right up against the card base and then cutting this off. And we'll make sure that's still, it is. So, so I usually put a little more adhesive here, a little thicker. That way when I cut that off, because I did cut off some of the adhesive, I know that's still going to be attached right here and it's attached really good. So that is ready. So I'm going to put this to the side because we've got a little stamping to do. Where did I put? Oh, there it is. I'm not kidding. I get to throwing things everywhere. <laughs> I have, have not measured this. It's bigger than an eight foot table that I'm at. It's big, really big. <laughs> so if I throw it on one end, it's a little bit of a stretch to reach it. Okay, so this is the inside of the card. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp those. There is a really neat balloon. There's a, a string for the balloon. There's the balloon. And I'm going to take Poppy Parade. Actually, 
How did I do this? Let me think here for a minute. Oh, no, I did do the balloons first. That's right. So I'm going to stamp the balloon about right here and maybe come off the edge just a little bit. And the thing I like about this, it has a little sliver in it. So that way you get that, makes it look like a shiny look of your balloon. Gives it, makes it look more like a balloon. I think that's pretty neat. Now I'm going to be using a different color. So I'm going to clean this off with my chamois. Now I'm going to use pool party. I can find it. There we go. And this is going to be the center balloon and I want it to be a little bit higher in my poppy parade. So I'll put that there. I need to clean off one more time. And then I'm going to grab crushed curry. I think that's the color I used. I could use whatever color I've got out. That is what I used. And I'll put another one about the same height, maybe a little higher than the poppy parade. Well, I ended up doing about the same. So those are ready. Now I'm just going to do my strings. So I'm going to grab my tuxedo black memento. Ink that up. I'm going to do the pool party first. I'm going to add an angle, so I hope I'm getting this right. There we go. And kind of angle this one. And then this one. And I could have turned this around to get another angle if I wanted to, too. So you can use whichever end you want. I just went ahead and did them all the same. Oh, no, I got some black on there. I'll mess with that later. I've got one of those ink erasers, and I'll take some of it off. Or maybe I can, I'll figure something out. But pretend like those black marks aren't there. <laughs> I must have had some on my finger or something. Well, no, it's not on my finger. I'm not sure where that came from. But there we go. Oh, that's what it came from. I got a little ink on the block and I must have angled it because this is so thin. That is exactly what happened. When I did this, it kind of moved on me. That's all right. But that is the inside. Get this all cleaned up. I don't think I'm going to use the balloon again. But just in case, I'll clean that out. Okay, now the inside is done. So I might as well put that on the inside of the card. This. Oh, yeah, Ramona, you are fine. Make sure we do the hashtag door prize. Do it without any spaces. Put it all together. You've got it tight, everything typed, but you need to take the spaces out. So do it one more time. That way you'll get on the drawing. And that hasn't happened yet. So you're good. So you can do one more comment just to make sure that that raffle feature puts your uh, comment in there. Okay, so there is that. And. This I already stamped. You saw it a minute ago by accident. I didn't mean to show you, but that's okay. And that stamp is right here. So I love that I can fill up that wagon with just one stamp. The flowers were the same way, and this is the same way. So that way, oh, perfect, Ramona. Or Ruth, yeah, you got it just right. Okay. So that's, so I just had to stamp that once with the tuxedo black. Once again, I'm using that Wink Estella. That's what I'm coloring on all three cards since I'm giving away, uh, giving you a free one if you do that $50 order. And where did I put it? Speaking of the week, Estella, I've got another one here just in case. Well, I'll keep talking here. I'm going to grab, I'm sure I'll find it here in just a second. Okay, I need to grab, oh, I hear you. I actually put it away. My goodness. All right, now I'm going to grab the crushed curry. And I'll tell you what colors I did here. This is a uh, berry burst with fresh freesia on the bow. And then I just flip flopped. There's the fresh freesia and uh, on the present and the berry burst on the, uh, the bow. And then this flag is done with um, poppy parade. So I've still got my yellow there. And I'm going to color in the bow on this one with it. I think I'm going to shake this up to make sure I've got it good and moist. I'm even going to squeeze it just a little bit. Even though none, it, none dripped out, that doesn't mean it's not ready. Actually, I don't want it to drip out. I don't want to lose any of it. You just keep picking up ink. When it starts to lighten up on you, just pick up some more. And if it seems like it's still a little dry, then we can still just shake it up. And that really does re-moisten the... Um, 
the brush. Okay, almost done here. I've got a little one here. Grab my paper towel and clean it off. Oh, hi, Linda Green. Saw your hashtag door prize. Glad you're here. And then I'll close this and I'm going to grab Lemon Lime Twist. I might have to clean this. I'm going to run out of ink here, I'm afraid, with this one. It'll work on, well, I might be okay. I need to use it on the last card. It might be just enough. But if not, no big deal. Just clean it off and then squeeze it. And if you came in a little late, the reason I clean it off before I squeeze it to get more ink, that's got some Wink Estella in it, and I don't want to get any Wink Estella in the uh, ink pad. A little hard to get off. It will eventually come out, but there we go. But I have done gotten some in it before, and I just dabbed it with a paper towel, and it did come out. But just so I don't have to do that, I will clean that if I have to get some more green ink on there. Okay, I'm clean this off again. And like with the aqua painter, like I said earlier, that you always have to squeeze a little bit to get water to come out to clean it. With this, I'm not squeezing. I'm just kind of brushing it and the ink comes right off. Now I'm going to use, ooh, that was cute. Get that cleaned off. <laughs> Don't need to get green ink on things. I'm going to grab the Azure Afternoon. Oh, good. I still got a good pool there. So I'll just use that. And I'm, the stripes, I'm going to do every other stripe of the cake with the Azure Afternoon. I'm going to start right here on this one. Maybe I should end part of the cake. This shouldn't take too long, though. Oh, that Azure Afternoon looks so pretty with the glitter in it. Wish you could see this, but I mean, you try this on your own. If you've got some Wink Estella, you're going to like it. And then, since I started here, I kind of want to have them uh, staggered. So let's go with, let's see, what did I do? I'm going to, there's a little bitty thin one right here. And then I'm going to go to this one. And then this one. And this one. Really, they're kind of staggered anyway, so it really doesn't matter. Because I think if I went on this one, they, yeah, it works out just fine. <laughs> They've actually staggered them for you. And this one I'm going to go on the end, right here and right here. Okay, and then the little scallops in here is the frosting. So I decided to do pool party for the frosting. So clean this off. See how fast that went off? I love that. Then grab my pool party. See if I need to, oh, nope, that's ready to go too. So I'm going to do the frosting with a pool party. That all done here. Now I am not worrying about shading. If you want to make things darker, you definitely can. But these images, I think, are fine without uh, bothering with the shading. There's actually going to be a little bit of shadings and lighting with this anyway, just the way you color it in. Just about done. And these are colors I probably wouldn't have put together either, but the paper did, and I like it. So there, we've got the cake all done except for the flames. So close that, grab my, I don't think that closed for good. There we go. I didn't hear that click, so I knew it wasn't closed. I'm going to pick up a little bit of crushed curry and get those colored in. Okay, so that is ready to go. That is all the coloring. I am doing. Oh, and I just thought with those balloons, if you wanted those to be glittery, you can do what Robin had said a minute ago. You can just take a, the clear Wink Estella, shake it up a little bit, and just paint the glitter on there, and that will make the, um, just put glitter on top of those. So those get to be shiny. So you can do that as an option too. Okay, so I'll put this to the side. I do have one thing I need to stamp. And this is a piece of pool party. It is a two and three quarter by three quarter inch. And I am using, let's see, where did it go? The one that says celebrating someone special. Oh, I know I pushed it out of the way here. 
you sit down see if I can see it. <laughs> I, oh, there it is. I always have things set up so nice when I first get in here and then I tear it up when I start stamping. <laughs> How many of you do that when you stamp? You just start making a big mess. Okay, so I've got the Azure Afternoon with this on the pool party. And I'm going to put this close to the center as I can. It just fits. That's a nice thing with the photopolymer. You can see where you're stamping. That looks pretty good. So we've got the Someone Special. I probably would have made it a little thicker if it was a... Um, Oh, one of our cling stamps, the rubber stamps, because you can't see through those very well. But I wanted it to be a little narrow. It just looked better with the layout I was doing. So that is all the stamping for this card. I need to bring in the die cutting machine again. Okay. Bring this piece in. And this is, oh, it's, oh, wait a minute. I forgot a bunch of stamping. Hold on a minute. We still need the wagon. I was so looking at the stuff I needed to color. I forgot the other stuff I needed. So this is a eight and a half by two and three quarter inch piece of cardstock. This should be enough for both cards for you. I take that back. This can be, you're going to get two uh, of these in your pack. I forgot that. So this is everything that's going to be used on the one card. I'm going to grab the wagon stamp and stamp it in Azure Afternoon. Can't believe I forgot this part. I was just centering on the colored part. Hold that down for a few seconds because I think it, with the ink has a chance to soak in, it stamps a lot better. Then I want to grab the banner stamp and use Poppy Parade. I think I'll stamp this above those. That should work. Okay, so got, now I have my banner. Now all these are going to be die cut. But I'm trying to leave some space, hoping maybe I can get all the dies on here at once and we'll have, only have to go through once. Then there's a handle. That one. Oh, there we go. I had it covered up with my paper towel. I'm going to use uh, the Tuxedo Black Memento. And I'll stamp it about right here. And what, last but not least, we need some tires. Oh, I don't know why I clothed this, because we need the memento again. I'll stamp one here. So this is definitely more cardstock than what you need, but that's okay. I'd rather give you too much than not enough. Make sure I got everything. Yes, I did. Now I'm ready to bring that die cutting machine in here. There are a lot of stamps in this set, which is nice because it makes it fun putting it together. Okay, grab my dies. This one, I'm going to have to grab some tape too because I'm going to need a lot of pieces here. Put this here, line that up. Let's fill, have it fill in that completely. Oh, hi, Christy. Yeah, isn't this set neat? Oh, you had your club tonight. I hope it went well. I'm glad nobody had to swim to your house. <laughs> Christy lives in Indianapolis, so she's not too far from me. Now, with this one, when I first lined it up, I'm like, wait a minute, this isn't working. Because I don't know if you can see this. There's a big white space right here. That's to help you be able to attach it to the um, wagon. So like they did with the flower. And they did with this too. They have a little bit of white cardstock here when you die cut it. That way it you can tuck it underneath the wagon, which is so nice. Let me get a couple of extra pieces. Oh, and this is what the post-it note tape, post-it tape looks like. I've got the one inch width. I think you can get like one third inch. I'm not sure what they all are. I've actually got the, uh, the that little one too, but I've been using this one inch the most. Had this for at least a couple of years, if not longer. It lasts a long time. Better keep it over here, though, because we've got some tires to put on there. And thankfully, they give us two dies. Oh, I need to color those, but I'll go, I can do that be, since I've already got the die cutting machine out. Normally, I would have uh, colored that before I die cut it. But no big deal. Since these are small, I just need one piece of tape. But they knew we were going to need two tires, so they gave us two circle dies for it. Oh, hope I didn't mess up the screen there for a second. I hit the camera. Then there is a die for that. So I'm going to get a couple. You know, I just need four more pieces. Let me hurry up and get that done quick. 
Oops, come here. And you can use this tape over and over again until it starts to fall apart. When it starts falling apart on me, then I know it's time to get some new tape out and throw the old one, that old tape away. But I can use it for quite a while. It's nice. Okay. So now I'll get this on here. It's a long one, so I'm going to use two pieces again. There we go. I think I got that in there straight. There's that. And that. And then last but not least, this big one that has the flag. That way I know, seeing the flag, I know I've got the right one. Oop, that is kind of overlapping that. I may not be able to do this. But we'll see how it works. We're going to test this out. Normally when the dies overlap like that, that one little section may not die cut. So I'm still going to go ahead and try it and see how it goes. Probably going to wish I hadn't, but we'll see. Put my another, the cutting plate on top. Make sure, see how I've got the, this paper slid on me, so now the wheels aren't even on the cutting mat. Make sure you get it all on there. This just fits because you need that to be on the platform to have that right thickness so it'll die cut. If it's not, if this platform and everything that you've got underneath it is not thick enough, it's not going to die cut. It needs that pressure. Oh, Krista, you like the one inch best too? Yeah, I do too. I think it works really good. Let's see. I'm curious. We're going to do this one first. <laughs> oh, it cut just fine. Yay. If it was more intricate, I probably would have done them separate. But since this wasn't too, I hit the camera again. Sorry about that. But since this wasn't so intricate, I had a feeling I was a little worried about it cutting up here, but it did just fine. So there is that. And we've got our nice little white tab down there. And here's the banner. Now this one I've got the most die cuts for. I went a little crazy with this one. But I'd like it when we have stamp sets, we can, we can go a little crazy if we want to. <laughs> Do a lot of die cutting. Okay, I think I had that one there. Here's our handle. And we do want that extra white that comes in handy. Oops, my tape just ripped. Throw that one away. And then here's the wagon. There. And I actually didn't do a red wagon. Normally, that's what you think of with the wagons. I end up thinking, okay, we'll do different colors this time. We don't. Because if I'd use this paper, if I wanted Red Wagon, that Poppy Parade would be perfect for it. But there's one. Oh, I'm going to make sure I keep those wheels handy, though, because I still need to color those. I'm only going to color that little bitty center. So it'll just take a second. Okay, that is all the die cutting. I'll put this to the side. And grab those tires before I forget. Put my dies over here. Get my Wink of Stella, and I decided to go with Poppy Parade. You can do whatever color you want, and I'll just color in the center. Oh, that's right. I want to stay down here so I could just clean off part of that ink off. There we go. So now with those, that looks a lot better just getting those colored. And I'll bring it up a little closer in case the camera's not close enough. But there we go. All right, now I'm gonna start putting this together. I want to get that ink off because I don't want to sabotage my next project. Okay. Bring in the card base. I'm going to put that over to the side. I'm going to start putting the wagon together first. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put, I think I'm still going to get my silicone out. I'm going to use seal this time. I'm going to put a strip all the way across the top of the wagon. I'm going to put this on like so. So I'm going to cover up that white strip. That's going to be the part that can go underneath the wagon. That looks pretty good. Oh, I can actually see the shine on this one. That looks so cute. I love that. Okay, you don't really need embellishments when you've got the glitter on the actual images. Now I'm going to take a little adhesive. Yeah, I'll put some here. So I know that's about the area where I'm going to put my uh, handle. So I'm going to grab the handle and that white spot right there. And I'm going to cover up a little bit of the black too because I didn't want it to be sticking out that much. Put it about right there. Hold that down. So that got on the adhesive I have there. And then I'm going to pop this up with dimensionals. So what I'm going to do to make sure that handle stays on good, 
I'm going to attach it, put that uh, dimensional right on top of it. Make sure that it's still, some of it is also on the wagon or the presence part. I'm going to just put some right across here where those two meet also. And I'll put one up here. I think one of these will fit. Yeah, these will fit on the flag right there. Yeah, I think I'll do one right there. That should hold it up pretty good. And then I want one on each of the wheels. And I forgot about my flag. I put this flag on later too when I made the card. Because when I got done with this, I thought, oh, it still needs a little something. So I'm going to go ahead, before I put that on the card base, grab this. Now this one, once again, I think is easier to do since it's a little bit smaller. I'm just going to put a little glue dot on each of the flags, just a little bitty one. And then just in case I made them a little too thick, I'm going to kind of smear that glue around with the tip of the glue bottle. It kind of spreads it out, and that way I don't have to worry about it oozing out the edges. Now I'll grab this and just put it across the top of this. I can scoot a little bit since I used glue. Now that I've got it where I want it, I'll push it down and then let the glue soak in, and then it stays on really good. Okay, so now I'm ready to put this on the card base. I'm going to take the paper backings off. Grab my card base. And I'm going to put this near the bottom, not all the way to the bottom, because I still need to have a room for my wheels. Kind of center it left and right in that circle, or partial circle, actually. I'm not going to push it down too much. Oh, you know what? I forgot something. I can still fix that. Like I said, sometimes I like it when I mess up. That way I can show you. There is a little bitty thin border piece right here. I'm going to cut that off while it's still on the paper backing. Take off that little bitty sliver. And that is narrow enough. I can put it on the back of the handle. I think I'm even going to do it this way so I can see a little better. Hopefully you can see, there we go. So I've got it right there on the top. It is bending the handle a little bit, so it's definitely better to do this before you attach it on. Then I can put that down because that kind of flips around too much, even though it's on there really good down here, up here. When I first got done with the card, I'm like, okay, that is flipping too much. So that's why you want to put a little piece right there. You could also put a glue dot down if it's, this doesn't have to be raised up, but I kind of wanted the whole thing raised up, but it still looks fine if you want to just put a glue dot on there. Then I'm going to take the paper backings off the tires. And those will just go right here, making sure the dimensional goes on the white circle, not on the wagon, because you don't want the um, wheels to look, uh, be tilted at all. And I'm kind of looking at this bottom line and making sure that those are lined up, the bottom line of the wagon, that is. And that helps me get them straight. Put that down. One more thing to do, I'm going to grab my greeting, and I decided just put this on with seal. You could do it with dimensional also. I kind of like the wagon being popped up above everything else, and I'm going to put this right up here. And for this to be straight, I'm looking at this short end right here. If this looks straight to the edge of the card of this uh, DSP, then I know the rest of it's going to be pretty straight. So there we go. That is the last card. And pretend like those black marks aren't there. <laughs> so there's the first card, uh, second card, actually. Now ready for the last one. The last one goes together a lot quicker. And there's not as much coloring with this one. The neat thing with the flowers that look, I don't want to say they look cartoony, but they definitely look just like they're uh, like a drawing. That's still not what I want to go with, but you kind of know what I mean. Let me grab that stamp again. Uh, my goodness, I am, there are just too many stamps in the stamp set when you're doing a video. <laughs> okay, there's, okay, I'm going to need that, so I'm going to put that here, because I know I need that in a little bit. Oh, there, they were under my paper towels again. There's, there are the flowers. Um, I'm going to grab a piece of basic white, so this time I guess I'm going to stamp first. I keep doing things in different orders. <laughs> Let me find my card base. Now this one, I've got another eight and a half by two and three quarter. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm going to do all the coloring ahead of time. I mean, right now, because it doesn't take that long, so I didn't have to do anything ahead of time. So take that eight and a half by two and three quarter inch piece again. 
get my flowers. I'm going to grab the um, Tuxedo Black Memento. Oh, thanks, Myra. I'm glad you like that. Marlene and Lynn, I'm glad you guys like that last card. Okay, so, oh, and I keep, I forgot to tell you this tip. With the Tuxedo Black, sometimes when you just tap it, it doesn't ink up real well. I twist on the stamp and then kind of pounce on it afterward. And that seems to uh, ink it up a lot better. This is a harder ink pad with our classics. They're more cushiony, so you don't have to do that. But on those harder ones, I think that makes it a little easier. I'm going to stamp up a little bit higher, of course, because we want that little strip that I'm going to die cut down here. And I need to stamp the wagon, but it's going to be a different color. So let me grab that. Get this cleaned off. I think I need to leave this out. Oh, no, nope, that's the only thing I need to clean off. Oh, take that back. I am going to use the heart. So I need to get that green off. Okay. So I'm going to use Berry Burst for the wagon. This is another color combo I would have never thought up on my own. It's out of the box, but once again, I like it. So this is the Berry Burst. I'll stamp it here. Once again, hold it down a few seconds so that ink soaks in. Okay, now I also need the handle and the wheels. And I think that's all I need for the wagon part. So grab the memento ink pad again. Ink this up. So I gave you plenty of cardstock on this one. And then we need two of the wheels. Kind of twisting that a little bit as I stamp. And yep, that is all I need. So I want to color these before I start die cutting. I always think it's a little easier to do when you're uh, oh die cutting to color them later. Oh, you know what? Well, no, I'll do that in a minute. Okay, so now all I'm going to do, I wanted these to be daisies. You know, last the first card I did, just more regular flowers, so red petals with the yellow centers. You know, daisies, well, there are lots of different daisies, but the daisies that you think of the most are the white petaled ones with the yellow uh, flower centers. So that's all I'm going to color in this one. Almost squeeze that, but I don't need to because I still have ink in there and it's got the Wink of Stella in it. I'm going to shake this up because that's another thing. When you do wipe it off on the paper towel, that kind of dries up the tip a little bit too. So that'll make it some more of the Wink of Stella will come down again. And I'm just going to color all of these centers. Yeah, that shaking really, uh, the pen that is, really, really helps because I can tell I've got Wink of Stella coming out. Only squeeze when you absolutely have to. That way you don't lose any of your ink. We used to have um, glitter paint, and I think it was the champagne glitter paint. You could actually refill the um, Wink of Stella and be the same color. I think it was champagne. My upline, Sherry, did that. So there we go. I've got the flowers are done. We just need to do the leaves now. So get my paper towel. Once again, I'm going to use Lemon Lime Twist. Run out of ink. I think I'm going to have to get more, but I'll go ahead and color these in. Get those little st uh, narrow stems. And you do want to color those in because they look a little fun. They are really narrow, but they don't look right if they're not colored in. You know what? I am. Well, no, there's still some ink right there. This is the last of the green I need to use. That all in. And I'm okay if I go out of the lines a little bit. This is a really, especially with the stems, the, uh, this green is really light and you really can't tell. Get that colored in. Yeah, I think we have just enough. We just got this leaf here. I think I got them all. Yep, looks good. So I've got my shiny glittery daisies. I'm going to clean this off. And that is all the, oh, I take that back. I want to do my centers here. But I know I'm done with this green. So I'm going to take my paper towel and just clean that ink up. That picks up all of the Wink of Stella that you've got there. That way, if you want to watercolor with our painter, water painters or the um, 
thunder pins, you can squeeze this again now and you don't have to worry about any of the wick Costello going in there because you've already cleaned it out. Okay, but I do want, oh, I did them yellow anyway. <laughs> oh, no, wait, I just did the green. Okay, good. I started thinking I just cleaned out the ink pad and I didn't mean to. I didn't do the yellow yet. That worked out fine. So I'm going to do the yellow centers. There we go. I did that right. I was afraid I sabotaged myself there. Okay. Oh, P P Patty or Daisy's your favorite. I like them too. They are really, really pretty. Okay. So that is all the coloring I need to do. Now I need to do some die cutting and I do need to grab, oh, I didn't get everything out of here. There's a piece of um, the crumb cake again. This is at three and a quarter by one. And that's going to be for that one die that does the wood, the wood plank type thing. Grab my die cutting machine for the last time. I'm going to put this in. I think this one is just going to go in the center. I'm not going to worry about taping it, just as long as I see that it stays on the cardstock. Then with this one, I need to grab the flowers, flower die. Get that going. See if I can get that. That looks pretty good. Put my tape on there. Need to do the wagon. And if you haven't die cut before, sometimes I forget. Some of you haven't done this before. You, when you turn it over, you can see a blade right there. Yeah, you can't see that pretty good. So that is what you want facing down. Sometimes when you haven't done something before, it helps to have somebody show it to you real quick. Put the tape on there. Then I need to grab the handle. And I'm okay if it overlaps the tape a little bit. I don't care if I tape, I cut out some of the tape. That's no big deal. Okay, so I got tape here. And, ooh, I might have enough tape. I was gonna have to get some more. Then get those two circle dies. Do my wheels. that going here it may look like a lot of lining up all at once but it makes it nice because I only have to put it through the machine once so, so it's kind of a little slower when you get try to get all these dies on there at one time but then you only have to die cut it once so that ends up making up for the extra dies you're putting down I'm still trying to get that at an angle it's okay if it's not much of an angle Okay, that looks pretty good. I've made sure that all the cardstock and the dies are on the platform. So I don't want those hanging over because that won't have the right pressure to die cut. Run this through. Oh, thanks, Ramona. Yeah, I, and it, it, so you don't have to, like, if you're in a hurry and you just want to, don't want to have to color all those petals, it goes a lot quicker just making them daisies. And I think they look so cute. Actually, I think I like them better as daisies like this than coloring all of the, the petals. It still looked good with the poppy parade, but I like the daisy look better. And that's good since it's so easy to do. I'm going to take the handle off. Oh, Myra, you need rain? Wow, I wish we could send some of the rain we've had today for you. We have had a ton. It's flooding everywhere. Our front yard looks like a swamp. If I could ship some to you, I would. <laughs> okay, there's the wagon. And then there. So now I've got this ready to go. But this time it's going to be part of the wagon. It's not going to be a flower box. Oh, I almost forgot the wheels. Let's get those off. There's the wheel. And the last wheel. All right, get this out of the way. And now we can start, I'm gonna leave all my pieces in there because I'm gonna start putting the card together. I'm gonna grab this because I do have the greeting to stamp. Get all the pieces out, I hadn't gotten those out yet. This is a piece of basic white. That is three by one and 
three inches by one and one quarter inches. I'm going to use the last screen. There are three greetings in the stamp set, and I'm using all three. This is Sending Loads of Happiness, and I'm going to use Crushed Curry. Turn this over and ink it up really good. And I'm going to stamp this near the center. That looks pretty good. Hold it down for a few seconds. There we go. And then I'm going to grab, oops, sorry. That probably sounded louder to me than it did you, hopefully. <laughs> I need to grab the heart. And I'm going to use Berry Burst. I thought there's a little bit of too much of an empty space there. So I'm going to stamp the heart right there. And then I'm going to do what I used to always do with the, uh, oh, with the Stella, which is what Robin talked about earlier. Because she, since this is already colored in, now I can just take some Winka Stella and go over the heart because I wanted the heart to be glittery. There we go. Looks cute in person. I can put that to the side. And, oh yeah, I do want to show you how to stamp the inside. This is it's going to be a landscape card again. So I want to lay it down this way. It's five and a quarter by four. I'm going to grab those daisies again. And my tuxedo black memento. And I'm going to stamp, make sure like the left side is stamped it's going to stamp off the edge of the cardstock and the very bottom I want hanging over the bottom of the cardstock too. Because if I stamp this a little too high, I don't want a white border here along the bottom. So it's okay to cut off and you actually want to cut off the bottom part of the flowers just a little bit. There we go. And ink this up again. And the leaf that's right here on the left end. It's kind of going to go over this leaf here, which is okay. That's as close. I don't want to go any closer because I didn't want the leaf to cover up the flower. I'm okay with it going over that leaf again. Once again, making sure it's below the bottom edge of the cardstock, this bottom part here. That way I don't have a white edge. Okay. Now that's how I stamped it. I, there is a gap there, but I still think it looks just fine. But with TV magic... I colored it in just like I did the daisies on the front. So I wanted to be able to show you how to stamp it, how I lined it up, but then I just colored it in just like I did with the first ones. So we've got our nice little row of, daisy, row of daisies. So I thought it looked kind of, I didn't like the, just black and white. I think it looks a lot better when you color those little, the leaves and the centers in. Okay, so that, those are done, put those to the side. Now this is the colors, the two colors I would have never thought to put together. Berry Burst and Pool Party. Kind of like it. It's probably still not one of my go-to colors, but I still like it. I was like, I love, the Stampin' Up! really does help me think outside the box. And if you get the kits, you're going to find a piece of Pool Party Grow Grain. This is also retiring. Um, it's on sale, too. It was $8, and I think it's 10 yards. It's $4.80 now. And I did check, and as of, as of the this afternoon, it was still available. But this is an eight inch piece. You only need a four inch piece for each card. So you just fold that in half, grab your scissors. And now you've got both pieces for your card. So I'm gonna put one over to the side. I'm gonna go ahead and fold the card base. This is that regular five and a half by eight and a half, half sheet of the eight and a half by 11 card stock. Get those corners lined up. Oh, hi, Anne. Oh, that's okay. Don't worry about being late. I know how it goes. Okay, so I've, I've been rushing around all day myself. So I've got the card base here. Then I use something else that's retiring. I had to grab a few things that are retiring. This is the Painted Posies em uh, embossing folder. Oh, yeah, you can see that really good. But let me show you the folder. There's the folder. You can see how there's, well, maybe you can. Yeah, you can. There, there's white space up here. I could have brought this down and had it completely covered with just flowers. But I kind of liked having some spaces that didn't have any embossing. So it looks more like a garden. So I just kind of, can since it's a bigger uh, embossing folder, you can move it around to where you like it. 
and put it through. It is a 3D folder. This is also on sale. It was $11 and that's $5.50. So if you don't have this one, make sure you get it. It's in the annual catalog. And like I said, as of, as of this afternoon, it was still available. So I didn't figure that, but I'd say, oh, if I fifty, that's 50% off. Duh. <laughs> so yeah, it's 50% off right now. So normally 11, now it's 550. If it sells out before April 30th, it'll be gone forever. So make sure you get that. But I thought that just looked really neat. And I thought that would kind of go along with the daisy look that I'm going for. So I'm going to grab this piece. This is another piece of that Just Kidding paper. This is one and a half by four. Turn this over. Some more cute kids. I can't get over all the cute kids on here. Like I said, I just couldn't do the same kid. There would be like maybe two on each sheet that might look the same, which is good for you because you don't make multiples like I do. So you could, if you wanted this paper, you could make cards with a bunch of different kids on it. Scrapbook pages too. I think I'm going to get another pack. I am getting another pack of this. So I can have them for some scrapbook pages, which I am so far behind on scrapbooking. I haven't scrapbooked not know how long. It's been a few years. Okay, adhesive. There we go. Kept talking, hoping I find it. <laughs> so this is going to go on the left side. So I am covering up some of the flowers, but it just looks really good. Um, uh, oh, sneaking out the back or peeking out the back. That's the word I was looking for. So I'm having a little bit show right here. Oh, it's over a little bit, but not much. I'm not going to worry about it. And then this can go on the card base. Make sure the fold is on top. When I repeat things over and over again, it's because I made the mistake and I don't want you to make it, uh, make it like I did. <laughs> I put this right in the card, center of the card base. So I've got the inside. I might as well put that on. I really think this looks pretty having those daisies right across the bottom. This could be a card front. You could stamp a greeting on it or put another lay on with a greeting and that would look pretty too. So that is ready. Now I need to grab all the little pieces for my wagon. I think I'm going to grab that silicone mat again. And once again, I'm going to put, you know, I'm going to use glue again. I was going to put it out here on the um, wagon, but when you attach this, I didn't want to have an adhesive showing in the openings of this piece. So I'm going to turn this over. I'm going to make sure I definitely put some on the bottom piece. There we go. So I'm kind of making little swirl marks to make it a little thicker than just a line. But then I'm only going to put a line here along the bottom of the top plank. Okay. Now I'm going to bring in this. And when you look at these lines, line the bottom of this with the top of the two lines there on the bottom of the uh, wagon. It seems to line up a lot better that way. And that helps you get it on straight with that line. Hold that down for a few seconds. There we go. You could also put it up higher if you wanted to, but I wanted more of the flowers to show up. So that's why I kind of put it down a little bit. And this will go on like so. I'm going to put, let me think here. I'm going to grab, try to remember how I did that. Oh, I want to put this on too. And I think this goes on a little better with adhesive. So I'm going to put some adhesive, make sure that's the end I wanted on it. It is. A strip, right? A couple strips here. So it definitely catches. Put it like this. I am covering up a little of the black because I want it to be closer to the wagon. Hold that down so I know it's attached really well. I'm going to bring in the card base. And I'm going to put the flowers. You know what? First, I'm going to put this down. I think I did it different when I first made my card, but I think this is better. Put the greeting on first. I'm just going to put some seal on here. And once again, I'm going to have this edge, though, I'm going to put on the left side this time lined up with the edge of the pool party layer. And when that's lined up, then it probably will go on straight for you. There we go. So that is ready to go. I'm going to grab this, put some adhesive on it. And I think I'm going to lay the wagon down just for a minute. 
have an idea where I want that. That looks pretty good. Actually, I want to make, now I'm going to put this on, make sure that it doesn't cover up the happiness. So I'm putting it underneath that eye a little more. I'm just laying it down so that way I can lift it up if I need to. I'm going to put dimensionals on this. Put one over that handle again. Put one here and put one up here. You know what? I think I'm going to put one right here also. That should hold it pretty good. You could put another one there if you wanted to, but I think I'm going to be okay. I'm going to, oh, I want to put another sliver. Almost forgot. It's going to be a lot easier to do. I'm going to move this dimensional just so you can see it. I've got another little narrow one right here on the border. And if you don't have any of those, you can even cut these up in little uh, slivers and get a bunch of pieces out of the one dimensional. But since I still have those narrow ones, I can get that on there. I can tell it's not hanging over the outside, so I can push that down. Now I'm going to get, I'm going to put one on each wheel again also. Those right there in the center. Get all the backings off. And I have learned if I put this, the nail, uh, nail piercer, the paper piercer at an angle into the paper backing, I can scoop it up a lot easier. I used to go like this and scoop it or, and it just didn't work as well. If I put it at an angle, it does a really good job coming up. So I'm going to put this on, making sure I cover up this white strip here. I want those flowers, the bottom of the flowers to be lined up with that. Oops, they, they're moving a little bit because I didn't attach them completely. There we go. The wagon looks good. Okay, now I'm going to push it all down because I don't want it to move anymore. Take the paper backings off the wheels. And once again, just kind of put that up there, making sure the uh, dimensional actually goes on the pool party layer and not on the wagon. Well, there we go. And once again, that kind of good. I put the wheel up a little higher into that line. So I'll do the same thing with this one, just so they're straight. That looks pretty good. Okay, now for the little four inch piece of ribbon, this is the last thing we need to put on. I'm just gonna tie this into a single knot, like so. I'm not gonna pull it really hard because I kind of like that knot being a little bit bigger, okay? Grab my glue dots. Now this ribbon's a little thinner. I am going to put it on the part I've got raised up, but I just thought it really needed this. I think it looks a really cute putting this on the wagon. Makes it even more special looking. There we go. Grab my scissors and cut those ends at an angle. And I will be done with the last card. There we go. So I, like I said, I would have never thought to put pool party with um, berry burst, but I think it turned out really good. Oh, trying to get my chair here, so now I see her. Comments a little better. Okay, I'm gonna bring all, oops, got my things to adjust here. Get all the cards here, so you can see them. There we go, and now I'm gonna look at all your comments here because I know I've missed a few here. Oh, move this up. Oh, thanks, Becky. I'm glad you like it. Thanks, Christy and Crystal. Oops. <laughs> Crystal says, oops, I did it again. Now she needs this set. <laughs> I'm glad you do. I love it. It's really a cute set. I always love it when I change somebody's mind to want a set. That means I did my job. Thanks, Christy. I think I always said thanks, Christy. We thank you again. Okay. And Ramona? Oh, thanks. I'm glad you like it. And Linda. Okay. I think I've seen everybody's comments. Oh, Christy, thanks. You said you like the colors together. Yeah, I do too. I was really surprised. This, I mean, both of these are really different color combos for me, but I really like them a lot. I think they turned out pretty good. Oh, thanks, Christy. I'm glad you said it. She says they all look great. And Marlene. Okay. So just to go over it real quick. For those of you that came in late, you see that host code that's showing up on the screen right there? That is the host code you need to use when you place an order if you want to get the card kits for free. So let me grab the card kits. 
So these card kits here, if you place a $40 order before shipping and tax using that host code you see there on the screen, you will get uh, these card kits. It's enough to make two each of these cards. So that's what's here. And I did all the embossing. The die cutting you saw me do here tonight, that is not done for you. So any die cutting you ever see me do in a video, that means that's something you'll have to do on your own. I do give you the card stock and the card kits to be able to do it. Now, if you don't like this bundle, but you like the card layouts and the colors, you can substitute it with another bundle. You do not have to stick with the bundle I'm using. I try to make it so and give you a little bit bigger pieces than what you need. That way you can change it up if you want to with a totally different set. But if you like this one, it is part of the online exclusives. Don't worry, it will be around for a little while because it's not one of the retiring things. It's not in the catalog. But one thing with online exclusives, I don't think I've said this for a while, we never know when they're going to stop reordering. Sometimes once uh, an online exclusive sells out, it's not guaranteed that it's going to come back. Now, if it's really uh, very popular, then they'll keep uh, bringing shipments in. But if it starts to be on there for a while and then they sell out a shipment, it may be gone forever. So you don't want to wait too long just in case we're surprised and it's gone. But since this one just came out in March, I bet it'll be around for a little bit before it goes away. I love how you can do things... With and uh, it doesn't have to be a wagon. It can be like this flower box. I saw somebody make a long card and they did a, like three of these and it, it looks like a nice little picket fence, not a picket fence, but a, a fence with all the flowers behind it. And it looked really pretty. So there's a lot of different things. These are all bright colors. You can tone it down with different color palettes. Just a lot of different things you can do with this stamp set. Okay. Um... Go to me just for a minute so you know I'm still here. <laughs> Let me look at some of your comments. Oh, good. Christy's got the hashtag door prize. That's what you're going to want to start doing right now. That's actually showing up on the screen. Good. I don't have to pop that back up again. So make sure you, if you are live in the United States and want to be part of the door prize, and I'll show you the door prize here in just a minute, I'm going to be uh, uh, drawing for the uh, winner here in just a few minutes, well, about a minute or two. So you've still got a little bit of time to hurry up and do that hashtag door prize if you haven't done it already. Type it in just like you're seeing at the bottom of the screen. Do not use any capitals and do not use any spaces. It has to be like all one word, but with that hashtag right before it. Yeah, Beth, you typed it in perfectly. So you just do it just like that. Those of you on Facebook, you'll see how people are doing it. Also on YouTube, you'll see the hashtag door prize. Yeah, Christy C. just did a little bit ago there on YouTube. You guys can check that out. That way you know exactly how to type. But it's also on the screen too for that matter. But that's what you do if you live in the United States and want to be in the drawing. There are two door prizes. Those of you that are watching live right now as we're doing this, I will announce that winner here in just a minute. So like I said, I'm going to give you another minute or two to get that hashtag door prize in. If you're watching the replay, still do that hashtag door prize if you live in the United States because there's a door prize that you can get in on too. And I'll show you that here in just a minute. While you guys are doing that, I'm going to switch back to my hands again. So everybody that's doing the hashtag door prize here during the live, this was a set of embellishments that. Uh, retired last year. They're opal rounds. They're a lot like those foil gems I used last week, just a little bigger. And the flex inside are more iridescent than like gold foil like those were. So this is a pack that you'll get. So this is everybody that's watching live that does hashtag door price. So we'll have the winner here for that in just a minute. And then everybody that did the hashtag door price during the live and during the replay. And if you're watching the replay doing it, you have until noon Eastern time next Thursday, which is April 18th. So you've got until then to do your hashtag door price to get on the door price for this one. And these are the opaque adhesive back gems. So those are the ones I'll do for the replay. The winner of this will not be in the second one. You can only win one door prize per video, just so you know that. That way I, get, I want to be able to have, some, have more than just one winner for the uh, for, per video. So it looks like it's slowed down. I've had a few people do the hashtag. Oh, I've got another one that just popped up. Oh, hi, Karen. I never didn't see your name earlier. Glad you're here. It's one of my regulars here lately. And Charlene. Okay, Ramona's got hers down. And Beth. Oh, thanks, Christy, on the flower box. Yep, I thought it just, I when I, after I saw that fence that somebody made that was a real long one, I thought, you know what? One of those would look, make a really neat flower box. So <laughs> that kind of got my, uh, creative juices flowing. Sometimes just seeing something that somebody made, you may not like the card, but you might like one. And I did like this card though, but every once in a while I'll see a card, it's not really my style, but there's some element in it that I really, really like. So I'll, I'll use that in the card sometimes. 
Oh, hi, Cindy. Says you're watching live for the very first time. I'm glad you're here. Welcome. You're from uh, North Dakota. He's from Hazen. I think that's what it says. Yeah, Hazen, North Dakota. I've got a glare right over <laughs> on my tablet, right over the uh, your town's name. So I'm not. Hopefully, I'm seeing that right. Okay, looks like the hashtag door prices have slowed down. So I'm going to go ahead. Oh, thanks, Karen. Karen still may do a thumbs up for me. Thanks very much. Whenever you do a like on YouTube or on Facebook, it helps the algorithm is what it's called. I guess it makes it so they start uh, oh, suggesting my video to other people. So if you did like the video, I'd love for you to react, do a hands, uh, thumbs up or anything like that. Oh, thanks, Cindy. You said you shared my video. I really appreciate that. That helps a lot. That definitely gets it out to people. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start the door price thing here. Fine. I always have trouble finding the, they have little pictures and from the pictures, I can't tell what they mean. I wish they had little words. That would be a lot easier. But there, here's the raffle. So I'm going to get that started. So this is going to be for the opal rounds right here. So we start that. Oh, Patty Joe, I don't think Patty, you've been on here for quite a bit. I meant to do the crowd. There we go. A little late on the crowd. <laughs> I don't think Patty Joe, you have won yet. So I do not have an address for you. You usually watch on um, YouTube, I do believe. So if you uh, look down in the video description, you'll see a contact me link. Click on that, and that way you can give me send me your mailing address, and I'll get those mail out to you next week. Okay, now turn find the raffle again. Turn that off. All right. Oh, I was going to show you quick. For, oh, I did show it to you. Never mind. I was going to show you the embellishments for uh, the replay, but I already did that, so I don't need to do that. So let me take this down. There are just too many little things to click on over here. There it is. Okay. So you see the ticker down there. That also tells you how to get the card kits. And I went over that. If you came in late, you can watch the replay as soon as this is over. But there's all there are also links just on video uh, YouTube. Click on the card class at home link down the video description. That'll take you to the page. It gives you the host code and all the information you need to be able to get the card kits free and the uh, Wink of Stella. I did forget to tell you that. If you place that $40 order, you get those card kits, which I threw away through somewhere else. But then if you pop it up to a $50 order, you will also get a brand new Wink of Stella, which is what I use to color every single card in the class. Okay. So that's right. I just thought Pat popped up. Patty one and Pat one. So I have two with pretty much the same name. <laughs> if you have the name Pat, oh, Patty Weed, you, you didn't win, but I do, had that Patty Joe. I'm glad she won. Okay. Now go back to me again. There we go. So just uh, the card kits, you get free with a $40 order using the hash, the host code, $50 order with the host code before shipping and tax. You also get the Wink of Stella added to it. Okay, I think that's it. I hope you guys all stay dry. For those of you, I can't remember who said that you were dry. Ugh. Tip of my tongue, but you said you need some rain. I hope you get some rain soon. And those of us that are pretty much swimming. I hope the rain quits really soon. So I hope you have a good weekend and I will see you next week. Uh, tax days on Monday. I'm still finishing up my taxes. That's what I'm going to be working on all day tomorrow. So hopefully I'll get those done tomorrow. Then I can relax for the weekend because we're celebrating my dad's birthday this weekend and our daughter and son-in-law are coming to spend the weekend too. So I got to get that done. I can't be working while they're here. So I will see you next week at 7.30 PM Eastern time. And hopefully when I get all the taxes done, I'm going to have time to make some, uh, videos besides the live. I haven't been able to do any reels or anything like that because I've been so far behind. Hopefully I have some videos to show you on YouTube before Thursday. But if not, I'll see you again next Thursday. Bye guys.